guys hi hi welcome to my channel simply Deborah I pray everyone is having a fantastic Sunday um, today is September we are in September happy fall y'all it is coming or it hasn't yet arrived but it is on its way so we are now in September today is September yesterday was the first so today is September the second hello and welcome to September um, but I wanted to come on today uh, for two things. One, I wanted to do a makeup with a smoky eye. I have never, ever, 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 ever did this. So how this may turn out may be an epic failure or it may be a, hmm, I know it's not going to be a yay, but it might be an in-between or it might be a definitely epic failure, but we don't know. We shall see. And I also wanted to come on to talk to you all in reference to the surgery that I had to have on last Wednesday. So I thought I would knock out two birds with one stone. So that is my objective for today. So we shall see how this goes, guys. Can't promise you anything. This may be a hot mess. <laughs> I told my daughter earlier, I was like, I'm going to attempt a smoky eye. She was like, Mom. Do you know how hard and difficult a smoky eye is? I'm like, I have no clue, but I'm going to try it. She was like, you should probably try to start off with something a little bit more milder. I was like, but I really want to do the smoky eye. So she was like, okay. So this is my first trial with doing a smoky eye. I do not wear makeup. I have on nothing at all. I wash my face. The products that I use for washing my face was this. Elemis, this is what I use every day, guys. It is Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I think the light may be taking it, but I use this. This is like, it has like a minty smell to it, but this is what it looked like. Um, it's really, really good, especially for women over 50, 50 and older. I am 50 now, so. I think this is a really, really good product. So if you are 50 and you want a good product for face cleansing, I heck, uh, highly recommend this. And then I use the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. Um, you need a cream for your face. So I use this um, and this is just, has a really clean smell. It's like a white, um, hopefully you guys can see that. It's a white cream. So I use this and it's very, very light and I just put it all over my face once I wash it. And then uh, for under my eye, I use the Pro Definition Eye and Lip Conditioner Cream. Again, I don't know if this will come out clear, but it doesn't look like it is. So I use this as well. These products are expensive, unfortunately, but I definitely think that they make a great difference um i know i've been using them now since june so um june july this is august i mean september so i had june i had july august and going in september so this is my going into my third month and i am noticing a big difference i really really love them um and like i said if you you can get them at amazon I actually got them at a boutique um, when I was out in Orlando um, in June. But I, like I said, I definitely highly recommend that if you are approaching 50 and you are getting fine lines under your eyes or, you know, your smile lines or, you know, if you just want something to just help. I'm not going to say it would get rid of them because that is not what it does, but it helps. Um, it helps. So. I use it and I like it. I think it makes a, a great difference. I've tried so many cleansers for my face, um, so many different creams, and I truly, truly, truly love those. And I've been getting a lot of, um, just a lot of feedback on uh, from people telling me that, you know, my skin is looking different um, and how young it's making me look. Um, so I, I like it. I, I think it keeps you looking a little bit younger. So, um, and that's all I have on. So I have, I wash my face and I put my cream on and that's it. I don't have on any foundation or anything else. So I am going to go through all the steps with you and going through all the steps. I will talk about the surgery that I had as well. 
Um, so first what I am going to do is, and like I said, I'm new to all of this. I've never done this before. So be patient guys. This may be, like I said, an epic failure, but my daughter is right in the next room. So hopefully if she hear me messing up something, she'll run in and tell me, mom, don't do that. She was telling me earlier, do you know what your base is? Your base for your eyeliner, for your smoky eye. And I was like, uh, I think it just goes right here. She was like, no, my, it's the whole eye. And I was like, okay. So we'll see how this goes. But for now, I am going to start off with my foundation. And the foundation that I'm using that I've showed you all before is Fenty Beauty. Um, this is number... I don't have on my glasses 310 um, I love 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 and I'm not a huge makeup wearer I don't wear makeup um, I've just really started to wear makeup once I turned 50 I guess turning 50 I had so many emotions um, and so many people was just like it's just another birthday but no it's a milestone and I was so emotional about turning 50 guys I was just it weighed on me so heavy that I was actually leaving 40s going into my 50s I'm like I have really God turned 50 years old and it was very 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 emotional so for a lot of my old classmates that um, I still keep in contact with they're going into their 50s and uh, just if you're you know if you're going into your 50s I believe me I, I feel you because I had so many emotions just going wild like oh my god I am going to be 50 years old after being 50 it's like okay you don't have a lot in life to look for but you do you have I mean I thank God that he allows me to wake up every day and that I have my strength I have my health and I just you know give praises to God so but it is very 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 an emotional um roller coaster when you're turning 50 years old it's just like you're going like i said from one milestone to another one and it's like i embraced it but still yet it's like the fact that i guess when i was younger in my 20s i used to look at 50 as being so old and now since i'm there it's like no i'm not that old <laughs> I think because my husband is getting ready to turn 50 I'm actually a year older than my husband he'd look at me and he'd be like uh 50 is not old I'm like okay who are you kidding boo but hey it is what it is but um yeah so um enough of me ranting I am going to go ahead and I am going to use this Fenty Beauty foundation and what I normally do is put it right here on my wrist on the back of my hand brother right there and you can see it it kind of runs so it goes on really really light and then I, I will be using this beauty blender guys and as you can see I've already used it quite often um, so what I do is just dab it on there and I put it on my face so I do not use a lot of foundation because I don't think I need a lot of foundation. So, and then what I do is just blend that in. I blend it all in really, really good. Oh darn it, I know what I forgot to do. Oh well, I can do it in a moment once I'm finished with this. So, when you put on foundation though i've noticed that a lot of people you can tell the lines from when they um put it on like either around their hair or like around their chin i take it and i blend it up under my chin so that it goes right into my chin and into my neck so you won't see any lines i try to just blend it all in I don't want anybody seeing any kind of lines on my face um, for my foundation ending. So, and like I say, I do not put on a lot of this. There, that's it. And now what I would do is I might put on a little bit more I don't know yet but I'm going to put on my concealer 
Again, I'm using Fenty Beauty product. And this is a concealer. And this is called Maple. And this is a really light color. And what I'm going to do with this is just go right up under my eyes. And I'm going to go down the top of my nose all the way down. So I hope you guys can see that. And I usually put just a little up under my, over my lips. And now what I'm going to blend it in with is a Fenty Beauty um, brush. And so I usually take my brush and it goes in a diagonal, if you can see that. So I usually go in the form that it's already in and I take my brush and just brush it, blend it in. And then I go work it up under my eyes. I normally put, uh, I did this a little bit backwards. I normally put this on first before my foundation, but uh, me talking. But now I'll go back in with a little bit more foundation under my eyes just to blend it all in. Cause I like the way it looks the other way with the, um, the concealer on first and then the foundation over it. So, so guys, the surgery that I had to have, um, I had to have a DNC. It is actually called a uh, hysteroscopy operative with dilation and cutterage. And what they call it is a DNC. Um, I had to have that because back in April, I had, uh, well, I'll start in February. February, March, I had my cycle. It was very, very light. Um, wasn't heavy at all. Um, usually my cycle, menstrual cycle lasts for about, I wanna say two to three days, and it's pretty light. So um, I had it, and then in April, I had it, and guys, it did not wanna let go it stayed on so april i came down the middle of april and i want to say um like somewhere toward the end of april after two weeks i asked my husband i was like you think i should make an appointment with my doctor and he was like well give it a moment he was like this has never happened to me before guys i've never ever ever bled more than you know your normal cycle period um whether it being like i would give it a week as being normal um, actually my cycle has started to light up. So I thought I was going through menopause. And so I came on my menstrual cycle in April, um, the middle of April, toward the end of April. Um, I had, you know, talked to my husband. I was like, you think I should go and see, um, my doctor? And he was like, well, why don't you wait until, you know, give it a, a couple of days and see what happens. So I was like, okay. So I did that, um, February, uh, March. April, I mean, May came and still no end to it. So I was like, well, I'm gonna go ahead after a month and I made an appointment with my doctor. Actually, my doctor was not available and I hate that, but I had to get in to see the doctor. I was in like a dire need. Um, so I went in and I actually saw a nurse practitioner at the hospital. Um, so I got an appointment with her, I went in and this was in May. And she told me, she was like, well, what we can do is just go ahead and give you a, um, a ultrasound. And she was like, and we'll go ahead and give you, um, birth control pills to try to regulate your cycle. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So she left out the room and then she came back and she was like, uh, yeah, I was going through your records. And then unfortunately we're not able to give you the birth control pills. I want to say guys, like five, six years ago, I had a TIA, which is a, um, like a mini stroke. Um, however, it did not affect me whatsoever. That is what the doctors ruled it as, um, at the hospital, but they ran tests after test after test and could not detect anything. Um, no blood clots, no, um, no loss of movement in any part of my body. Um, they ran test after test after test. Um, I had a CAT scan, I had an MRI, I had everything. And they could not come up with anything um, as them ruling it as a TIA, as me having a mini stroke. But 
because now this is in my record because that's what they treated me as when i had went into the doctor or into the hospital i wasn't feeling well and it was feeling like my right side of my body was getting numb and so when i went into the hospital with those um with those symptoms they immediately um took me as having a stroke and immediately um gave me some stuff that i probably didn't even need um blood thinners gave me some more stuff and i couldn't get up but they immediately like i said diagnosed it as a stroke um but my doctor stated that he really don't believe that it was a stroke but because now this is in my records unfortunately they are very 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 careful on any medicine that i can take because as you all know with birth control pills sometimes in older women it may cause um, symptoms of a stroke or it may cause you to have a stroke um, if you had a stroke in the past so unfortunately they would not give me the birth control pills so to help regulate my cycle so I was like okay so she was like so we're gonna go ahead and um, schedule you for the ultrasound and then once we get the ultrasound back then we will you know take it from there so I was like okay fine so that was in May really didn't get any answers of anything went ahead did my ultrasound that weekend um, called my doctor demanded that I get in there to see her and I got in there to see her in like the end of May I want to say beginning of June so went to there um, went to her appointment and she had told me she was like um we got your results back from your ultrasound I explained everything to her as far as what was going on with me and she was like we got your records back or your results back from your ultrasound and she stated that everything came back fine they didn't see anything um that was abnormal and so she was like are you still on and i was like yeah and so she said well what we're going to do is give you some more some different pills they're hormone pills but the hormone level that's in the pills is very very low and she stated that what that would do is again help regulate my um cycle and she said, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a, um, a biopsy on you. And I was like, okay. So she was like, um, would you mind if we did the biopsy today? And I was like, no, not at all. So a biopsy is almost just like a, I want to say almost like a, um, a, uh, um, like a pep smear, um, type of exam. Um, they use the same instruments that they do with the pep smear, but however, they take another piece of like a cuttery of, of like um, some scissors and cut a piece of your lining from your uterus and they send that to the lab. And with that, you do have at that moment that they're doing it. I don't know if anybody ever had a biopsy um, as far as in the uterus. Um, but it's very cr it cramps oh my god like a, a really like a on 10 um, cramping for your cycle and so I was like oh my god and my husband was in the room with me and I was um, sitting there and she was like she was telling my husband she was like hold her hand <laughs> and he took my hand and I was just squeezing it the cramps were so bad oh my god so anyway they did that and she sent it off and she told me to take the pills and um she was like um i'll see you back in four weeks um and she said and then you know we will see where we're gonna go from here so i was like okay that's fine so in june um i started taking the pills actually it was so weird guys because we were scheduled to go out of town i want to say june like the second week of june uh, for a family trip my husband and my daughter uh, for our little mini vacation that we always do in June so we were going to Orlando and we went there and I hadn't taken the pills yet and when I um, was told at the um, pharmacist because the bleeding had kind of let up after she did the biopsy she told me that the bleeding probably might you know kind of light up and it did and so um she was like um so the lady told me at the pharmacy, she was like, your doctor want to make sure that you take these pills every day at the same time. So I was like, okay. So she was like, make sure you, you know, consistent with taking them and make sure you're consistent with taking them on the day, on a daily basis at whatever time that you start, make sure that next pill and the following pills is at that same time. So I was like, okay, fine. Got it. So came home, we ended up going out of town 
and when we went out of town my it was God it was God I was like oh my God thank you Jesus it's God and I thought like I said I had just went through menopause and maybe that was causing the heavy bleeding so I was like um oh my God I had told my husband and I was so afraid and so nervous down there that I'm thinking any moment it was just gonna you know start back but it was gone the whole time I was um down there we were down there for a week and I didn't take any of the pills so came back and guess what else came back it came back so I don't know if my if I'm just in a stressful environment um as far as work related um as far as just day-to-day -day. and I don't know if that has something to do with it or what but came back and like I said it came back so I was like oh boy so I ended up started taking the pills and um June and so it did um you know lighten up and with taking the pills every day at the same time it did kind of you know um dissipated it went away so I was like, okay, good. So I was still taking the pills daily. And so my husband for my 50th birthday, and it could have been that, I don't know. But for my 50th birthday, my husband and I um, went out of town to Miami. Uh, what a beautiful trip that was. And my cycle was gone. I had a really nice time. I was able to enjoy myself as far as sitting back, relaxing, and just wearing my little dresses and shorts and had a really nice time down there. And then... Um, came back after the trip and it came back and now i'm still taking the pills so i was like oh boy so i made another appointment with my doctor and so went to go see her um and she told me that this was like in after i came back from my miami trip um the end of july so she was like well, um, your biopsy came back and everything is good. Everything was benign that, you know, they tested. She was like, so we can do two things. Uh, we can do either. And I was like, well, can you do a hysterectomy? She was like, no, I don't think we need to go that extreme. She was like, but there is two things that we can do. And she said, one of them being the DNC and the other one, I wrote it down because I can never remember it. It's an endometrial ablation. And so what that is, is that they go and they remove the whole lining of the uterus. Okay, so I was like, okay, fine. So I had an appointment with um, my cardiologist. Okay, you're saying why well, I'm going to a cardiologist. Back in, I know it's a lot to take in guys. It's a lot for me, believe me. But back in December, I had been going back and forth to the hospital because my chest had been hurting so much. So, this particular time I went into the hospital in December and um, <clears throat> from chest pains went into the hospital and I guess I can continue this right now what I'm gonna do is contour my nose um, this is the truffle and as you can see it's a, a dark brown again Fenty Beauty product so okay so and what I do is just like draw this on the eye line of my nose okay so i um get my brush so i went and um went into the hospital in december okay there we go so my doctor had um they have ran some tests and they told me that they did an ekg everything um i thought everything was coming back good and so um, my doctor came in the room and he was like, well, we're going to go ahead and admit you and um, tomorrow we're going to do a um, stress test. And so I was like, okay, cool, no problem. So he was like, when was your last stress test? And I was like, it's been about a year ago. And he was like, okay, fine. He was like, so we're going to go ahead and do another stress test. So I was like, okay. So I told my husband, I was like, babe, you can go ahead and go home. I was like, I'll be fine. They're just going to run a stress test. And he was like, no, I don't want to leave you. And you know, you were having chest pains. And my daughter was at home. So he was like, um, he wanted to come home to make sure she was good or something. But he was like, I'll be back. Guys, as you know, we're in Chicago. There are so many shootings on the expressway. The first thing, you know, I'm always thinking the worst. And I'm like, I really don't want you out there at night. You know, it's just so dangerous. And although he's a police officer, still, you know, things happen. So... I even hate to be out there at nighttime. 
So anyway, um, he was like, I'll be fine. So I was like, okay. So they ended up keeping me. Um, and the next day he ended up staying, he went home, he came back and he did, um, by the time the doctors came in the room with me, he was there. And so my doctor came in the room and he was like, well, looking at your EKG, he was like, um, how do you feel? I was like, I feel good. He was like, um, they did another EKG that morning. Like every six hours they were doing EKGs on me. And so at nighttime, and this always happens, so it's not like a surprise to me. But at nighttime, every time I'm in a hospital and I'm hooked up to heart monitors, the heart machine always goes off. The nurses run in there and they was like, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah. But my heart rate was dropping really, really low. And it's normal for your heart rate to drop low while you're sleeping. Um, so that morning when my doctor came in there, he asked me, he was like, are you okay? And I was like, um, you know, he was going over stuff with me and he was like, um, you have a type two heart block. And I was like a type two heart block. And he was like, yeah. And he was telling me, you know, there's four chambers to a heart where when the beat get to the middle, unfortunately it's not letting out as quick as it should. It's like staying there and then it slowly lets out. So your heart rate is dropping while that beat is in the middle. And he was like, um, so your heart rate is getting to like lowest 38. And he was like, and that's not good. He was like, so what we're going to do is we want to go ahead and put a pacemaker in you. And he was like, and the pacemaker will help to just, um, make sure your heart rate don't drop below a set, certain rate. And they wanted to set the pacemaker to 60. And he was like, um, and so I was like, okay, I was like, well, can I think about it? I was like, can I come back and do it? <laughs> and he was like, uh, unfortunately you need to get it done like right away. And so I was told that I needed a pacemaker like a year ago. And so I, this is not anything new to me guys. So I was just like, kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, thinking that it would go away, but it didn't. So. I was like, okay, well, I guess, you know, I'm here. You guys got to do what you have to do. So they went ahead and took me in that day, that morning, and went ahead and put the pacemaker in. So, okay, going back to this story. So with the endometrial ablation, um, my doctor described to me when I went to go see my cardiologist after I had saw my doctor, she told me, or he told me that with them using any kind of energy, as far as a laser that I have to be really, or they have to be really um, cautious of that it may set the settings off of my pacemaker with the um, laser. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, I thought I would be fine. But he stated that anything that is used with the laser below the belly button, I should be okay. But if I was gonna do that, go that route, they will have to do it at the big hospital, not at my doctor's hospital, um, which the two hospitals are affiliated with one another, um, which is Rush Oak Park Hospital and then the big Rush Hospital. So they are affiliated with one another. My doctor do work at both of them, but it was just much easier for her to do it at this hospital, um, being that she was doing two other procedures that morning. So um, I was like, well, he was like, just think about it. He was like, I'll call your doctor and, you know, talk over it with her. And then, you know, you have the two options. So whichever one you feel is, you know, that you want to go with, you know, that's fine. And so I was like, okay. So I came home and I was a little bit nervous and I would talk to my husband. And I decided not to do the one with the laser only because um, I felt that that was a sign from God with me having the pacemaker. And sometimes God will send you you know, little stones before he send you that big rock. And I think that this was like one of the little stones. So I was like, which not to say that anything down the line, you know, will ever probably come of this, but if it did, I want to know about it. And so with the um, endometrial ablation and them taking and removing the lining of the uterus, that if anything, and just say it could be a tumor, it can be cancer, it can be a cyst, it can be anything, can grow and grow and grow there in the uterus and you not know it because you don't have that lining to, I guess, to send signals through your body that something is not right. Um, the same with like your stomach, when you have stomach pains, 
you know, your, your body started telling you, you know, you're not feeling good. So without that lining down there, although I wouldn't have a cycle, which would be the best part of it, but the negative end of it is that anything can potentially grow there and I not know it and then it can be lead to something serious. So I thought, well, you know what, since, and then with that as well, they will have to reset my pacemaker. So I was like, you know what, that, that's too much. I was like, um, although the bleeding was too much, but I felt that that was a lot. So I was like, I'm not gonna do that. So I went ahead with the DNC, which is the simplest uh, procedure. And then I had an IUD as well. So an IUD is almost like a birth control. Well, it is a birth control. It's like a little T-shaped. Um, a plastic that they stick up in your uterus and that would help um, and I don't need it for both birth control but it although I'm not having any other kids as well but the only thing that she wanted to put that in me for is to help maintain my cycle um, so I did the DNC I went in on Wednesday um, they had to put me to sleep to do the procedure and they did it and um, they inserted the IUD and everything went really, really well. And so I left the hospital. Um, I was only there for about, I want to say six hours. So after, you know, you in the recovery room and everything and they want to make sure that you're good. Um, so I was there, uh, like I said, for about a total of six hours. Then I left and I came home and I went to sleep. Um, however, I think that I wanted to push put this video up a little bit earlier but I think I pushed myself guys and I shouldn't have but I went to work on Thursday and Friday and I think I should have really took Thursday to just relax but with the DNC I was in no pain I was not hurting I was not I mean I felt so good so I was like yeah I can do this I'm not gonna stay at home and use a PTO day and I'm not really you know sick and I'm getting ready to go out of town next week. So I'm like, I need my PTO days. But had I been feeling, had I not been feeling well, I would have took it, taken it. But like I said, I was feeling okay. So I went ahead and I went to work and I think I pushed myself too much. Friday came and I was so lightheaded. I was lightheaded to another level, guys. I have never in my life been that lightheaded. Although I went to work, I pushed myself again and I shouldn't have. Um... So listen to your body guys, don't be like me. Stay at home and rest. Although you may think that you're feeling good, don't push yourself, it's not worth it. So I went ahead and I went to work and I shouldn't have. Um, Friday when I came in from work, I went to Target and I went to the cleaners and I came home, I ate and I was stretched out on my couch. I took a shower and I was in the bed and I didn't do anything. Saturday morning I got up yesterday and I cleaned up um, wash some clothes um, and again I started not to feel that well um, and get back on my couch and just relax so today I think I'm okay um, I am set to go out of town next week so I'm gonna get plenty of plenty of rest then um, I'm not pushing myself if you guys say well why are you up filming you don't need to be doing this go sit down somewhere but I do I feel okay um, my lightheadedness has dissipated. It's not, you know, like it is. I am taking, um, vitamin D and B12 complete. So I, I think I'm okay. I think I'm balancing this. I'm getting plenty of fluid in me. So that was the, um, cause of my surgery. So now, you know, <laughs> so now what I am going to do is move on to completing my makeup since now you're informed about that. Um, so now I have used my concealer. Um, I use my concealer and I use my um, my toner for my nose. So the next thing, like I stated, I want to try to get a smoky eye. Guys, I have never, ever, ever, ever done this. So we shall see how this goes. I put my foundation on. I have my brushes here. So now comes the fun part. Woohoo! I have my phone here, so I am going to be looking at somebody else that I love to see her makeup. So I am actually following her steps. So if it don't work out, it's all because of her. <laughs> no, but I am going to try this. Um, let's see, I am opening up this for the very first time. My brushes. 
I feel like it's Christmas time, guys. <laughs> Opening up new things. Yay! Okay, so for the base of my eye, I do think this one is more for the base because it's a more flat. I may be wrong, but I'll check with my daughter. I do think this is more for the crease because it's a little bit shaped like an egg. If you can see that, I may be wrong, but I think it is. And I think this one is more for like a defining for the eyebrow. It looked like it because it's pointy. Hmm, I don't know. Tiara, she just so happened to be walking by fast. But, okay, tell me if I'm wrong. This one I think is more for like the base. And this one is more for like the crease. You almost had it, so. I'll Here's the pro, guys. This is my lovely daughter, Tiara. Say hi. Please view her channel as well. She has a YouTube channel, which is called Tiara C. That is T-I-A-R-A-C. She does a lot of makeup tutorials. That's my son. I have to call him back. He does. She does a lot of makeup tutorials on her channel. So please check her out because this is my go-to girl. <laughs> okay, so she's going to tell me. All right, um... I'll use this for, you said you're doing a smoky eye. Smoky eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, what palette are you using? I'm going to use that palette. Just the paper from there. What shadows are you using? Okay, so for this is going to be my base. And this and this is going to be the smoky eye. So I want this to dark and then that go into the light. I mean, you can play with makeup however you want. But yeah, I can probably usually, blend them. Like, that's like usually like your base color. Yeah, that's what I want for my base. I'm sorry. Okay. So I would actually use... Where's the other ones? These are the ones you have? Okay, yeah, okay. and this one. I came with those five. Okay. I would start by using um, this one. Mm -hmm. And basically like really lightly like a light hand just going over like your whole eye with it okay because you want to like blend it out like it's a transition color okay and then after that one <laughs> <laughs> and then after that one then you can go in with this one mm -hmm. and this is gonna be like your actual eyeshadow brush to actually put on the lid okay and then for which one you said you, for the smoky yeah you can actually go back in with that same blending brush mm -hmm. the um palette that i will be using the colors are really really pretty and this palette is called a tart so i get this from sephora so i am going to be using the first color is called an instant it's nice and soft. Oh my God, I think I put too much on. <laughs> but I'm blowing off, okay, so I'm going in with my eye. She told me to use very light, very light strokes. What do you want? No, but you said you might stop by in a few hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> you laughing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's laughing at me, guys. Okay, so I have that on. Guys, can you tell the difference? What steps did you do so far? So, so far, all I did was put on foundation, concealer, and defining my nose. Okay. So, I feel like for some reason, my eyeshadow, my eyelashes are growing so long. It's like they're really starting to curl. Okay, so I got that on. I don't know if you guys can see it. I feel like you can. I probably need to brush my um, thing. Okay, so I got that on. Should I fix my eyeliner, my eyebrows before I did this? 
Honestly, you could do, I do like the total opposite of steps. Oh, okay. So, I mean, yeah. So, okay, so now. Like, I started my eyebrows first. I'm taking my flat brush, and I'm going to go in for the light part of it. And the light one I am using, it is called Journey. So. Okay, where does this go? <laughs> okay, so. I'm putting this more on the inner to the middle part of my eye. I don't think it looks that bad. Okay. So now I'm going to go back in with the other brush that I use and there's nothing on it. And I'm gonna go with the, it's called Ember, and it's like a, like a dark chocolate. It's not really dark, but, okay, let's see. Um, actually, like, when you're doing it, like, actually, like, do, like, windshield wiper motions. You're just, like, patting it on there. It's a blending brush, so you have to, like. Like that? I'm not doing the brush like that. <laughs> Guys, what do you think? I see it. Oops, I'm using the wrong color. I told you guys I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> it looks smoky okay um, this is what you're doing you're dragging it you're mm -hmm. supposed to do like this like actually like oh like try to like keep like your hands still but like just like move like your wrist like that like you know what i'm saying i think i got product on that first too Ooh, that looks a hot mess. <laughs> Let's fix this up, guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to correct it. I'm going to go back in with my... I'm going to go in up here. I think I got too much in over there. Okay, guys. Don't laugh at me. I've never done this before. Look at me. It doesn't look bad though. Do it. Do it look bad. <laughs> My daughter is over here busting up at me, guys. I don't know. I think because the colors are not um for some reason, it's like this one is a little bit more that's an eyeshadow brush for your lid. No, I'm just saying it just seemed like this one is sticking to it more than this one is. See, like this one is not as heavy as that side. Okay, I'm sure I do not have the smoky eye. <laughs> but, what do I want to do? I want to do something to get my eyebrows right. Because my eyebrows don't look right. I should have had surgery on my face with makeup. <laughs> ah! Okay. No, no fret. What I'm going to do is just brush those guys. Let me know what you're doing. Okay, I'm done. I'm not filling them in or anything. Okay, so 
what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna put on some eyeliner maybe I think what I should have did was used like a light and dark color to give it a more of a um, What do you guys think? Can you see it? My guys, what do you think? I don't think I achieved the smoky eye, but I don't think it looked that bad either. I don't know. Tell me what you think. I think I need to fill in my eyebrows just a little bit. I got my eyebrows microbladed. So if you haven't checked out that video, I will link it in my video at the end for you to check it out. And I typically don't do anything to them but get up and go. So, okay, so I did that. Yes, I need highlighter. I'm gonna put on a little blush. Uh huh, I have my blush brush. I have my blush brush. It doesn't look bad though, do it? No, for first time? Like I said, guys, I do not wear makeup. You think this is a blush brush? Okay. So I'm just going to put on a little blush. Can I use this as highlighter or no? I want something like a... a um, What's your highlighter to do with this? Yeah, I need... Where's your highlighter? I know you like What do you guys think? I don't think it's really that bad for my first time. And I, like I said, do not wear makeup guys. So I don't think I did that bad of a job, but let me know in your comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I should never, ever, ever pick up another brush in my whole entire life. <laughs> or if you think it's okay, I should continue practicing. So I don't think it's that bad. I'm going to ask my husband, what do he think? But now I'm going to go in with just some highlighter and I'm waiting on my daughter to bring me her highlighter. More Fenty Beauty products, guys. Two. I like hers. Wait, I ain't finished on three. Palette. Oh, that's pretty. These two. Well, you can do when you do yours. I'll do this one. So now, how do I do this? First of all, is this the right brush? Okay. So I'm gonna put some highlighter on, guys. Okay. So again, this brush is going in an arrow. So you always work it from this way. I don't, I'm just assuming that that's, that's, the, that's the proper thing to do, guys. Okay, so where do I put this? I put this like right here. Yeah. Ooh, too much, too much. <laughs> Ooh, I put that on too, too much. Come here. I did not do that right, guys. I think I went in too much with it. Tiara, she left me out here to... You want me to help you? Yeah, I need that fixed, definitely. Okay, you applying more, <laughs> like what? 
I just need a little help with it. I think I put too much on this one. Get it like right up under here because it's like. Oh, that's all I have to do is move it with my hand. Yeah. I mean, your hands are tools. People even apply like their foundation with their hands. So, I mean, don't be scared to use your hands. Oh, well, it looks fine. So I did mess up that bed. Babe, I got something to show you. So this is my husband, guys. Come here for a moment. Oh, I'm not done. What I'm gonna do, I guess I'll put on a little uh, mascara. Wait, I don't want you to see me right now. Give me one minute. Okay, so I am gonna go in with a little mascara. Do Fenty Beauty have mascara? They just released the new palette that time with a little mascara. Yeah. I like it because it's little, so I'm able to work it in better. I feel like my eyeliner, I mean, my things though have really grown. Mine have too. For some reason. Yeah, they look long. They do, don't they? I'm like, why are they so long? So guys, what do you think? Sexy mama. <laughs> okay, so I did that. So now I'm just gonna put on a little lip stuff for my eyes. I mean, for my lips. Lip stuff? Yeah, I need some lipstick. Let's see. Should I go matte or should I go L'Oreal? about this one well, that's not bad I got a trick guys Use Q-tips to clean up. What do you think? It doesn't look bad, do it? Do it? So guys, this is my finished look. What do you think? Do you think I should never pick up another brush? <laughs> or do you think it's okay? It. I don't know it's so different oh my god wow I did it oh my god so now I have to go show my husband my look guys I don't know what you think be honest people <laughs> my daughter's been laughing at me but I I kind of think it's okay I got like the highlighter the highlight if you can see that it's so pretty I think I kind of like it. Hmm. My, for some reason, my eyelashes are really growing so long. And it's so freaking scary because my eyelashes have never been this long, guys. So weird. But that li um, lip stuff I really kind of like. Hmm. Mwah. So, this is the end of my look, guys. I hope you have enjoyed my conversation. I hope you have enjoyed me. Um, if you could do me a favor, yep, you already know. There it is. Hit that subscribe button right below my fingers. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to my channel. I so greatly appreciate it. I love you guys so much. As my Bella say, how much do you love me? I love you guys this much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for looking at my channel. 
Um, again, don't forget to go over to my daughter's channel, Tiara C. That's T I A R A C. And she does her makeup, she does her things, guys. And um, I may have her to do my look. So, yeah, we'll see. So, we'll compare her look to my look. So, um, please don't forget to like my um, channel. Hold up. Hold up. You want to make this a challenge? No, I just said yeah. that. No. <laughs> I'm not challenging, believe me. Um, but um, if you like this channel, give it a thumbs up. And I'm getting my office done. I cannot wait, wait to reveal that. It is going to be so nice. So that should be done by tomorrow completely. So we shall see. But um, this is it, guys. So I probably need to like probably curl my hair or do something with it. Because it's just like in limbo right now. But I don't know. Hmm. Sexy, sexy mama. Okay, guys, that is it. Thank you. Talk to you in my next one. Bye-bye.